Hi, welcome to Skip's Corner, where I cover Nashville's baseball history and events and introduce you to players, coaches, and other fans. I'm recording this on Thanksgiving weekend. We had a great Thanksgiving Day celebration. We have so much to be grateful for with family and friends visiting and lots of great food and stopping long enough to say thank you for all the blessings that we have. And I'm sure you did too. Now, today's podcast has a little bit of a of a thanks, not a Thanksgiving connection, but I think you'll understand when I get into this a little bit. You know, these days, major and minor league teams are known for fan giveaways. It's an important part of getting fans into the stadiums. And colleges have even picked up on the idea. And there's everything from so-and-so bobblehead night and cap night and warm-up jacket night, bat night. I could go on and on. There's a plethora of other products that have joined used car night, cancer awareness night, faith night, and so many others. These have become staple concepts in baseball as teams attempt to outnight each other, all to stimulate attendance and encourage fans to get behind their team and maybe even give to a charity, which is great, or just have fun. It adds to the baseball experience. Some would say, well, there's a game going on. Let's watch the game. But still, the important thing is to get fans into the stands. Butts in the seats, I've heard people say. Well, Chattanooga's Joe Engel, long before Larry Schmidto taught minor league baseball how to promote minor league baseball and eventually major league baseball at a different level, Chattanooga's Joe Engel, who was owner of the Lookouts and the ballpark where his team performed, is considered one of the greatest promoters of all time. Dubbed the P.T. Barnum of the Bush Leagues, he was honored in 1960 by minor league baseball as king of baseball for his service to the game. And he taught minor league baseball in those days how to promote. And a lot of the teams wouldn't go along with it because they wanted to retain the sanctity, the purity of the game that was going on on the field and not shenanigans that might be going on in the stands. Because, for example, in 1936 in May, Engel once raffled away a fully furnished house. He had to buy a ticket. And guess how many people showed up? 1936, just after the Depression, 26,639 people overflowed the stands at his ballpark. And they stood along the baselines and sat along the outfield walls. Now, probably more famous for this promotion, he signed 17-year-old female Jackie Mitchell to pitch in an exhibition game on April the 1st, 1931, April Fool's Day, against the New York Yankees. Now, the game was rained out, so she actually pitched a few innings on April the 2nd, and guess what she did? She struck out Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig, and that's quite a feat. Now, once again, Engel was a promoter. I I don't know. I'm just saying, but give Jackie Mitchell her due. She struck out Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig. That same year, the shenanigans got to a whole new level. When he traded a player, his shortstop, Johnny Binky Jones, for a turkey, there's the connection I was talking about earlier, and he said the turkey was having a better year. Now, Binky Jones, Johnny Binky Jones didn't really play for them that year, although his contract was owned by the Lookouts. But when the sports writers heard about it, they disapproved of the trade as a farce, so Engel invited them to the ballpark for a turkey dinner, and the writers arrived at the stadium to find the turkey laid out on the table with the placard uh, placed in front reading through the courtesy of Johnny Jones. And while they ate, Engel is reported by author Steve Martini to have told the writers, you've been giving me the bird, so now have one on me, before declaring that the Charlotte Hornets, who he had traded Pinky Jones to, they won the trade because the turkey was so tough. The promotions were a great draw, and when teams needed a boost in lagging attendance, Engel's successes were often emulated, maybe not to the degree that he did. I don't remember anybody giving away a house at Sulphurdale, but there were some that were used. He taught the teams how to have money night. The Nashville Vols had their share of promotions, but not always with the expected results, such as on a money night. It was a hot August evening in 1953, 
and it went awry when three fans had the ticket stub with the same number that had been drawn for the lucky number to go out on the pitcher's mound and pick up as much silver money as they could. And after a bit of a rhubarb ensued, only one was determined to be the proper series of numbers on the ticket, and the holder carried $800.30 from a pile of silver coins placed on the mound. That's a pretty good take for just going out to watch a ball game. Now, on July 21, 1954, Nashville lost a game to Atlanta 4-2. to two. And surprisingly, attendance was a low total of 624 fans. 252 were members of the Knothole Gang, meaning only 372 people paid for a ticket to the game. But Nashville acted quickly, deciding to promote the next day's doubleheader as T-shirt night giving each youngster 6 to 12 who purchased an admission ticket a Vols t-shirt. Now, both of those promotions, not whole gang, if you got in free as a not whole gang member or maybe you paid for a $5 for a season ticket to get you in any game, I've seen some of those uh, passes. That also meant you mom and maybe dad or dad and maybe mom were coming to the game and maybe they were bringing little junior, little sis all to the game. It's pretty good promotion. Now, the T-shirt night promotion helped attract 2,620 for a July 22nd doubleheader with the Atlanta Crackers. Atlanta won the opener 16-3, and the Vols won the second game 8-6. Unusually, both games took the same amount of time, two hours and seven minutes. And the fans who were there, the kids got a T-shirt if they were between 6 and 12, but they were treated to a couple of extra treats. Nashville's Bob Lennon, in his quest to win the Southern Association's Triple Crown, blasted home runs number 44 and 45, bringing him within eight of tying the league record. Now, Lennon went in the season with 64 homers, a record that was never matched when the Southern Association went out of business in 1961. Nobody had ever matched that. But before that, however, he was honored with Bob Lennon Knight, on August the 29th, 1954, and he got a pretty nice promotion. He was given an engraved black bat from Louisville Slugger and a trophy from league president Charlie Hearth for his special season. But all the fans received an 8 by 10 photo of Lennon. Now, you may have seen these. They're not rare, but it's him standing at the plate, and it's got that written on there, Southern Association Home Run Champ. That promotion attracted 5,419 fans and was the best attended event that season since opening day. And Lennon gave the fans an added treat by smashing round tripper number 56. And with more promoting being done than ever before, Nashville's home attendance would still end the season at 89,470. It had not been that low since the year World War II ended in 1945. But the next day, after Nashville's T-shirt night at Sulphurdale, Joe Engel was honored by his hometown with his own Joe Engel night with a luncheon and a buffet after the night's game between his lookouts in Birmingham. And how did he plan on celebrating? He was going to hold another money night. I'm going to have one drawing for the women, he said, another for the men, and the third for children under 16 years of age. Why not give each of them a chance? Besides, it is not my money. Now, there were other nights that were held at Sulphurdale. Car night was held in 1956 between doubleheader games. Knothole night was not unusual, and business would give tickets away for SO night and Jersey Farms night. And all these minor league teams have to give Joe Engel credit for what he taught them to do in as early as 1931 and on up until the Southern Association disbanded in 1961. Well, that's it. Thanks for listening in. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. And as we prepare for Advent and the coming of uh, Christmas morning, I hope you all have a great week. And if you'd like to write to me, send me a note at 262downright at gmail.com. I've received several in the last few weeks, especially after the Farrell Owens interview and a few other things. And I'm always grateful for those. I appreciate your encouragement. And if you would like to listen in again, I hope you'll do it again for me and for you and learn a little something else about Nashville baseball history. Thank you 